We see metal roofs used as accents on homes and buildings all over the country. In this video, we're gonna talk about some do's and don'ts where we typically see it and what you should consider if you're thinking about using a metal roof as an accent for your home or building. What's up guys? Welcome to the Metal Roofing Channel. I'm Thad Barnett. Make sure you subscribe if you're new. We release metal roofing and metal construction content every Monday and Wednesday. As always, for Q&A Mondays, all the questions that we discuss today are listed in the description down below. You can jump ahead using those quick links. Today we're talking about using metal roofs as an accent for your home or building. And I have Adam Mazzella and Jeff Hawk with me. Thanks for being here, guys. I'm excited to talk about this topic with you. Yeah, thanks for having us, Thad. So let's start with, you know, where do you typically see metal roofs used as an accent? Give me some examples of that. So you can see it, you know, uh, walking into a commercial building. Imagine, you know, almost every pharmacy has little accent roofs wrapping, you know, what's otherwise, you know, a, a square building. Uh, it's just something to, to give it more of a welcoming appeal. Uh, you're also going to see it a lot of homes have really started incorporating metal into their, their shingle roof design. So whether it's an asphalt shingle or you see it with slate, see it with tiles, you see it with shake roofs as well. So, you know, you're starting to see it everywhere. Um, and it's usually like the entryway or covering doorways, things like that. Usually something on a perimeter edge of the house, you're usually not seeing, you know, standalone metal roof on, you know, a, a pitch off in the back of the house. It's usually uh, meant as something to be eye-catching, usually at the front of the house or over an entryway. Yeah, and we saw that uh, wrapping the porches of our Rock the Block uh, roof on HGTV. Exactly. So it's, it's going to be kind of in the theme with that, that, you know, it's, it's usually meant more as an architectural curb appeal, something of that nature. So when it comes to performance, I mean, that's an important part of especially standing seam metal roofing, which is our world. Tell me about the performance of using metal roofing as an accent with other types of roofing. I think one of the things that's important that you got to remember right off the bat is even if you're doing a small section or, or, or it is an accent or whatnot outside the building envelope, whatever the case may be, you still want to make sure it's installed correctly as far as proper clip spacing, proper details. You don't want to get complacent just because it's a smaller section of your roof. It still needs to perform and it's still obviously you're going to spend the money on it. You want it to make sure it's, it's done properly. So if it's something that you're doing that's tying into an existing project. Um, maybe it's maybe it's something that you're doing after you know your roofs or walls been on for a while. You want to make sure you're using the proper details uh, to make those tie-ins weather tight. A lot of times you won't see manufacturers having typical details for uh, shingle tie-ins or wall tie-ins um, on their uh, on their website. But if you call them up, they might have something available that they've come across and had to use in the past. Um, you know, we have several details that we don't have published for tying into shingles on the same slope, uh, using a pitch transition uh, for tying into shingles or tying into shingles and metal in the valley. So uh, there are proper details to be used. If you can't find them, you should definitely call the manufacturer and they will recommend uh, what they suggest using. Are there any time where you shouldn't use metal roofing as an accent or are there different materials that don't jive well with metal? I think the biggest one that I can think of is if you have dissimilar metals on a project, say you're putting an accent roof above a window and you have copper gutters, or, or maybe you have a weather vane on top of your house that's made out of copper and the runoff's going to run and hit the metal. I think that's probably the biggest red flag I see with uh, using metal um, on an existing project or as an accent that might be incorporated in other uh, materials that, that aren't going to interact well with metal. Yeah, and I, I think it's you really got to check manufacturer's website of that other product. So I, I've seen you know wood shakes that uh, you got to you got to remember wood shakes usually have some sort of treatment. Uh, could be a copper nitrate similar to that of that you'd see in a treated lumber that will cause a metal roof to to fail. Uh, you know whether it's steel or aluminum based. That, that roof will have a galvanic reaction. It will fail. We've seen it. So I think you just want to be very cognizant of your roofing product. So even if you are married to a particular look, so let's say that wood shake, there are alternatives to a wood shake, like a, a stamped metal shingle wood shake, a simulated wood shake, things like that. Um, there are products out there where you can emulate a look and ensure that you're gonna you're not gonna have a dissimilar metal or a dissimilar metal issue galvanic reaction issue. Other things I'd, I'd just say kind of follow your typical metal roofing 
rules. You know, if you've got an extremely low slope, make sure you use, you use the right panel. You may be wanting to use a snap lock panel. It's cheaper. It's faster to install. But if you're, you know, at a low slope, you're going to be stuck using a, a mechanical lock. You don't want to cut corners. It's a lot of the, the similar things that we preach in the metal roofing world all day, every day. So, you know, the rules don't really change. Just, you know, the install around that metal roof, you know, will have some differences. So what about the aesthetics when choosing metal roofing for an accent? Tell me about, you know, some considerations there. Yeah, so it, it, there's a lot of things to, to consider. So you have the type of panel, you know, you know, if you're in a residential application, you're going to want a residential panel. So you're not going to want some big, bulky industrial type panels, wide panel, tall seam. That That's really not going to fit. Part of the reason why people want metal as an accent roof is that you want it to pop a little bit, but you don't want it to pop too much. So if you've got a bunch of neutral tones on your, on your, you know, your, uh, your additional roofing product, your walls, uh, your shutters, your door, things like that, you're still going to want to use a neutral uh, roof color because it's still going to pop because it's still going to stand out from that shingle uh, from the other products. So um, you know, most of the things we're seeing are, you know, if you've got neutral colors, pick a neutral roof, meaning, you know, if you've got neutral colors, don't pick like a regal blue that's really going to pop because it's really going to stand out and it, it's probably not going to look great. Um, you know, and at the same time, if, if you're in a more of a commercial application, so if you're at a pharmacy or something like that and you see that, that metal roof, you know, that kind of wraps it, you know, you're usually going to see something that's more in line with their brand. A lot of times you see reds or greens or, you know, if it's a fast food place, a lot of times you'll see reds or yellows and things like that. So another option you have is uh, on ChevyMetals.com, we have a roof visualizer and you can go in and you can upload a photo of your house or your project and you can put in different sections and see uh, how the metal roof would look in different colors and whatnot. Um, another option too is, you know, whoever is going to be the contractor putting it on, they should have panel samples. They should have the manufacturer's color card. You should be able to get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like, especially in those smaller areas um, before you go ahead and make a decision. Yeah, that's a good point, Jeff. If I'm a homeowner and I'm either getting a re-roof or new construction, what should I be thinking about when it comes to choosing my contractor with these multiple different types of roofing? The good thing about the accent panels is that usually it's a small section. So, and there's not as many details involved with it. So if, if you're somebody who is a shingle and a metal installer, you probably won't need to get two different contractors, you know, especially if, if it's going to be ended up being like a snap lock panel and things like that. Um, as long as it meets the requirements, you know, not too low of a slope and whatnot, those panels are pretty easy to install. Um, but obviously, anytime you get a contractor on your project, you want to thoroughly vet them. Um, if, if you do have shingles and metal on the project, I would probably ask, you know, have you done metal before? Is there projects I can go see? The same instances would apply as anytime you're, uh, we talk about picking a roofing contractor, but I might not be as concerned because it is a smaller portion of the house. But obviously, you know, you want to make sure that they're, they're capable of performing the project. On the flip side of that, if I'm a contractor, you know, maybe a shingle contractor, uh, and someone's asking me for a metal accent, what are some things that I should be thinking about uh, when it comes to that installation? So if you're a contractor and don't have the traditional metal forming equipment, be it a roll former, be it a uh, uh, sheet metal shop, shear and a break and things like that, is we have networks of manufacturers all over the country that kind of provide twofold. A, they can provide the product, the Sheffield Metals product, and B, they can work with you and show you the details, show you the products, and uh, kind of downstream a little bit further, help you sell that metal roof, at least that metal roof section to a homeowner by showing panel samples, the variety of panels they can offer, as well as the color charts and uh, metal color chip decks. And I'd say too, as far as a contractor, if you're not comfortable doing it, just don't offer it because it is an accent portion of the roof. It is meant to stand out. And if it's not done correctly, it's going to stand out even more. Jeff, talk to me about warranties when it comes to metal roofs as accents. Your typical warranties are still going to apply. Your paint warranty is still going to apply. Your substrate warranty is going to apply. But as you know, with that being said, all the exclusions still apply. So if you are integrating it with other products, you want to make sure there's no chemicals or things within those other products that are going to damage the system and not going to be covered because uh, it's excluded in the paint warranty or the substrate warranty. So again, as we talk about with all warranties, read through it, read the fine print, 
and uh, know the products that you're working with to make sure that there aren't going to be any issues uh, down the road. Um, as far as weather type warranties on commercial projects, again, uh, we do metal roofs that tie into other products all the time. Usually the tie in in those areas where the two roofing products meets uh, are excluded just because it's hard to differentiate if there is a leak, which roofing would be causing it. Um, but again, you know, there's definitely warranty options available, um, whether it's being used as an accent or not. And as Jeff mentioned, make sure you're following best practices for installation from all the manufacturers uh, of your roofing system. Make sure that if you end up walking on your roof, safety is top of mind, follow all proper safety procedures. If you have a shingle roof running down on your metal roof, make sure you're not stepping on granules and scratching the paint that way. Uh, just be careful, it is a finished product. Um, so be careful when you're walking up there. If you have any questions, comment down below. Love to answer them. Subscribe here to the Metal Roofing channel. And as always, I'm Thad Barnett, and we'll catch you next time.